Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I welcome you back from the success camp. How many of you are there? How did it look like? Marvelous and wonderful. Great and glorious. Victorious and triumphant. It was a wonderful time. And I pray that the impact of that success camp will never stop in our lives in Jesus' name. And now to follow up with the face to face of the God of miracles. You are here today and you will not miss your miracle in Jesus' name. Why don't we pray together? Father, in the name of Jesus. We thank you for your children, happy, righteous, holy, heavenly children. We just pray that your blessing will be abundant in every life in Jesus' name. All of us that went through that success camp, Lord, I pray, success in every life. Victory in every life. Joy in every life. We banish every work of Satan. We destroy every work of Satan. Dry all their tears in Jesus' name. And we pray as we come today face to face with the God of miracles. Your children will not miss their miracles in Jesus' name. We thank you because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray. Thank you very much. You can sit down. We're looking at the word of God. Victorious personal experience victorious personal experience when you come face to face with god the god of miracles you come face to face with miracle face to face with success face to face with salvation face to face with the good things of the lord we're looking at isaiah chapter 45 and I'm reading from verse 22. Isaiah chapter 45, verse 22. Look unto me, face to face. Look unto me, and be ye saved of the ends of the earth. For I am God, and there is none else. I'm going to read that verse again. You see that word there, saved? It's a kind of broad word. It's an all-round word. It's a word that is all sufficient. It actually means salvation for your soul, for your spirit, for your body. It means salvation in all, we say, permit me to use this word, in all ramifications. That means it's global. That means it is total. That means it is everything. Therefore now understand, look unto me and be ye healed all the ends of the earth. For I am God and there is none else. I'm going to read it again because I just told you now the word salvation is deep, is high, is broad, is long, is extensive, is expansive. Therefore I'm reading, I said, look unto me and be ye delivered all the ends of the earth. For I am God and there is none else. Everything you need you'll find in Jesus. Everything you need, you'll find in God. And he says, look unto me and be saved. Look unto me and be healed. Look unto me and be delivered. Look unto me and be blessed. You are blessed tonight. Blessing in your soul. Blessing in your spirit. Blessing in your school. Everywhere you go, blessings will run after you in Jesus' name. Look unto me. Here is the Almighty God talking to you. He says, come and have a victorious personal experience. As we think about looking unto the Lord, it's not just looking ordinarily. Number one, look. Number two, listen. Because he's going to talk to you. He's talking to you tonight. You will hear him. I said you will hear him. Number one is to look. Number two is to listen. Number three, learn. You know, there are many, many young people, they look, they listen, they learn nothing. And because, how do you know they don't learn? Because if we listen and look and look and listen and learn, there'll be a change. There'll be a transformation. I say, change your life already. From darkness to light. From poor to prosperity. 
and then from sadness you are going to get to gladness and something good is coming upon your way in Jesus name you look tell me the next thing you listen tell me the next one you learn you lean you lean on the Lord because he is the rock of ages he is our refuge he is a fortress I can lean upon him you know sometimes you are walking in life you are tired you want to lean on somebody and sometimes we're going through life and life is not dealing with you know something good you can lean on the lord and as you come to lean on the lord he will support your way you will not be disappointed in jesus name i look tell me i listen tell me i learn tell me I lean, I live, I live. You see, there are people, they think they want to live. They say, I'm living my life. No, you're not living your life until you meet the Lord Jesus Christ. You don't know what life is because He is the way, the truth, and the life. If you're going to live and really live, live now and live eternally. And live with real zeal and with real passion, excitement and passion in your life that you really enjoy living. You need to come to the Lord. That's why we say face to face with the God of miracles because He's the one that gives you life. He says, I am the resurrection and the life. Resurrection life will come to you today. A kind of life that will never know any kind of defeat, any kind of weakness, any kind of sickness. If you're sick tonight, you're healed in Jesus' name. I'm looking, I'm listening, I'm learning, I'm, le I'm, I'm leaning, and then I'm living that I love. You see, when you come to the Lord, face to face with the Lord, and you see the glory of the Lord, the love of the Lord, the grace of God, the mercy of God for you, there is just one thing for you to do in response to that. You want to love Him. There's nobody that can really look at the Lord and not love the Lord. When you look at beauty, you love beauty. When you look at glory, you love glory. When you look at wonder, you love wonders. And when you come face to face with the God of miracles tonight, you will love the Lord more. Of course, He loves you because God so loved the world. He gave His only begotten Son that whosoever believes in Him will not perish. You will not perish. But you will have everlasting life in Jesus' name. Now as to look and listen and learn and lean and live and love, you let God have his way. Let God have his way. He will clear the way for you. You see, when the road is appearing kind of a blotch, and then they say there's no way there, let God, let go. And if you let God, He lets you go. You'll go everywhere. You'll succeed in Jesus' name. Now you're going to give it to me. Number one is to look. Number two is to listen. Number three is to learn. Number four is to lean. Number five is to live. Number six is to love. And then number seven is let God have his way tonight the lord will have his way in your life if you let him have his way he will save you if you let him have his way he will heal you if you let him have his way he will deliver you if you let him have his way blessings will never stop in your life look unto me and be you saved and be healed and be delivered and be blessed all the ends of the earth for i am god and there is none else give me a good amen there amen. three things we're going to look at what's my topic tonight tell me out loud victorious personal experience that means you come face to face with the lord you use your own eyes of faith and then you look at the lord yourself daddy cannot do this for you mommy cannot do this for teachers cannot do this for you you have to look yourself you know sometimes i say i see i see and then somebody says let me borrow your eyes and so that i can see what you see i say it's not possible you cannot borrow another person's eyes and they see what it says you open your own eyes you are going to have a personal experience everybody say personal experience 
it will give you victory in Jesus' name. Number one, looking unto God my Savior. Looking unto God my Savior. And that's what we need to do. In fact, many people do not know that, you know, the Lord is our salvation. He is our Savior. It's everything we need. I'm coming to the Psalms now. Psalm 25. I'm reading verse 5. Psalm 25 verse 5. It tells us here in Psalm 25, reading from verse 5, it says, Lead me in thy truth and teach me, for thou art the God of my salvation. You see that? You are the God of my salvation. How I praise the Lord for those of you that gave your life to the Lord Jesus Christ during this past um, success camp. And I learned that even some of us have gone for water baptism. I pray that the experience will be permanent in your life in Jesus' name. And now that you are saved, and of course many of us have been saved even before that time. And when you came to this uh, success camp, it was to renew your commitment, your consecration to the Lord. And the Lord is smiling at you saying, yes. I know when you were saved, I know when you gave your life to the Lord Jesus Christ And since that time you made a commitment I'm going to be following the Lord, following the Lord the rest of my life And then you'll be coming and coming And since that time you have not gone back, you'll never go back And the blessings of the Lord will be abundant, overflowing in your life in Jesus' name But now after we're saved, look at this in verse 5 Lead me in thy truth. That's why you have those discipleship classes. That's why you have Bible study. That's why you have our teachers who are teaching us the word of God. They're leading us in the truth of the Lord. And teach me, for thou art my God, the God of my salvation. On thee do I wait all the day. Why am I waiting for the Lord? There's a problem here. I want him to solve. He will solve that problem. There's a challenge here. I want, to, I want him to deal with. He'll deal with that challenge your life in Jesus name I'm looking now at some 51 some 51 and I'm reading here from verse 14 and you will see that the psalmist is still referring to the God of his salvation God of my salvation God of my salvation this salvation is so important he mentions that almost everywhere Psalm 51 verse 14 deliver me from blood guiltiness he will deliver you you see, there are some people, they do not have value for life. Their own life is so cheap to them. And they can throw away their lives, you'll not throw away your life. If there's anything precious to have, it is your life. I've, I've heard of, you know, some young people that they just say, you know, they say there's nothing to live for. Nothing to live for. Look up. There's a lot to live for. There's a lot ahead of you in Jesus' name. And then they become so distressed and so depressed and so discouraged that they say there's nothing to live for. And then they take their lives. Blood guiltiness. God deliver us from that in Jesus' name. Other people, they do not follow the lives of other people. And they will want to injure them or they want to destroy them. You will not have destructive spirit in Jesus' name. Deliver me from blood guiltiness, O oh God, thou God of my salvation. See that again. The service is saying once again, you are the God of my salvation. How did he get to that? That now he knew you are the God of my salvation. Look at verse 1. Have mercy upon me, O God, according to thy loving kindness, according to the multitude of thy tender mercies, blot out my transgressions. That's how to get saved. He acknowledged that he had transgression. He acknowledged he had sin. And then he even put it in the plural. And he said, God blots everything away. When God blots all your sins away, there will be no remembrance anymore of anything you ever did wrong. And then he says, you are the God of my salvation. You will be your, the God of your salvation. Look at verse 2. Wash me thoroughly, that means thoroughly. From my iniquity, cleanse me from my sin. He says, I need cleansing. I need cleansing. Then he said, cleanse me from all my sin. When God forgives you and cleanses you and takes all the guilt away, then it means he's the God of your salvation. Salvation is yours. Say, salvation is mine. You repent of your sin, you believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and it is there already in Jesus' name. Verse 7, Porch me with Esau, and I shall 
be clean. Purge me and I shall be clean. If God cleanses any sin, anyone, that sin, that person will be clean. You'll be clean in Jesus' name. Wash me and I shall be whiter than snow. Make me to hear joy and gladness that the bones which thou hast broken may rejoice. The joy of salvation will come to you. Hide thy face from my sins and blot out all mine, all my what? Iniquities. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. When that happens, it becomes the God of your salvation. And how do we get our salvation? Just look up to Him and say, God, I want this salvation, full salvation, free salvation. And a kind of salvation that makes me know that there's a great future for me. I'm going to point number two. Now, before I get to point number two, I'm going to give you three words. Are you ready? Say yes, I'm ready. Number one, faith. Number two, freedom. Number three, future. That salvation, we get it by faith. We don't work for it. We don't cry for it. We don't roll on the ground for it. We don't say, Lord, I'm sorry for my sin. I abandon my sin. I look up to you. I believe in you. Faith. That sal salvation comes. Say, salvation comes. Number two, freedom. Freedom from guilt. Freedom from the pressure in your heart, freedom from fear that I'm afraid of the judgment to come. I've done something bad. No, God has forgiven me now. Because of that forgiveness, I am free. Say, I am free. Number three, future. Now, because you put your hands in the hands of the Lord, and now He's leading you, He's leading to a bright future in Jesus' name. Faith, freedom, future. Point number two. Living through God, my strength. Living through God, my strength. Living through God, my strength. He is our strength. You know, if we're going to live, we need energy, we need power, we need strength, we need might. And if we're going to actually live victorious, you know, we're going to stand on our feet and be strong and have a good backbone that can carry our weight. We need some strength and God is your strength. I said God is your strength. And look at this, Exodus chapter 15 verse 2. Exodus chapter 15 verse 2. You're going to see some connection here between the word salvation and strength. Salvation and strength. Look at this, Exodus chapter 15, we're looking at verse 2. The Lord is my strength and song, and he has become my salvation. You see the connection. Number one, there is salvation. Number two, there is strength. You see, there are some people they claim to be saved, but the strength to live, live the life of the Christian, they don't seem to have. They are anemic. They don't have blood. They don't have strength. They're so weak. They don't have any spine. There's no backbone. There's no courage. They compromise with everything and everybody. But there is strength. I said there is strength. And that strength is just tonight in Jesus' name. It says, the Lord is my strength. Who can defeat the Almighty God? I said, who can defeat the Almighty God? Nobody. And when the Lord is your strength, nothing will defeat you in Jesus' name. And then he said, and it's become my salvation. He is my God, and I will prepare him an habitation, my Father's God, and I will exalt him. The Lord is my strength. The Lord is your strength. Look at Second Samuel. Second Samuel. We're looking at chapter 22 here. Second Samuel chapter 22. He is your strength. And we're looking at verse 33. It says, God is my strength and power. And he maketh my way perfect. God is my strength and power. Remember, he is your savior. He is your salvation. And then now, he is your strength. That's how we come this weekend face to face with the God of miracles. You know, when he gives somebody who is weak, he gives that person strength. That's a miracle. 
Somebody is sick, it gives him strength in healing. That's a miracle. Somebody who has been battered and shattered by evil spirits and evil powers, and the mighty strength of the Lord comes and drives the world those evil spirits, and it makes you strong, and you're free, and tonight you're free. I said tonight you're free. That all the strength of the Lord and the power of the Lord and the might of the Lord will so much be in your life. Will say, Praise the Lord. All the things that tied me, all my chains are broken. All the fetters are broken. And then you rise up in the strength of the Lord. And then you move on. And the strength of the Lord will never fail in your life in Jesus' name. Look at that verse 33 again. It says, God is my strength it's not that in the past some people say the good old days when i was strong the good old days when nothing could defeat me but uh, you know, the service is saying these are good days and these are better days coming upon your life in jesus name he says the lord is not that he was not that he will be in the future but god is my strength and my power and then he says and he maketh my way perfect how oh, i praise god if you know jesus as your personal savior and the lord has become your strength i praise god for you I said, I praise God for you. It will make every crooked thing perfect and straight in your life in Jesus' name. You'll be happier than you ever were. In the past, maybe something happened in the past. I was sorrowful, I was battered, I was this and that. Look up, something great is coming your way. It will make your way perfect in Jesus' name. And we're looking at Isaiah now, chapter 12. Isaiah chapter 12. Remember, we're looking at the word of God that tells us very clearly, very clearly and pointedly that the Lord God is your strength. We're looking at Isaiah chapter 12 and we're reading from verse 2 here. Isaiah chapter 12, verse 2. Behold, God is my salvation. I will trust, I will trust and not be afraid. For the Lord Jehovah is my strength. Have you seen the connection once again? It says, Behold, look at this in my life. He is my salvation. And because he is my salvation, he is also my strength. I pity those who are not saved. When there is no problem, they appear strong. When there is no challenge, they appear strong. And they say, What do I need salvation for? I am strong already. I am mighty already. I'm courageous already. But it's when the challenge comes that then their strength fails them. And their power and their might fails them. And that's the advantage of the one that is saved. Because when that problem comes, the Lord comes by his side and says, Don't worry, I'm by your side. I am your strength. I am your strength. In the school, he'll be your strength. In danger, he'll be your strength. In confusion, the confusion of life, he'll be your strength in Jesus' name. But you see the connection, my Savior, my strength, my salvation, my strength. Come to that again in chapter 12, verse 2, Behold, God is my salvation, and I will trust him, and I will not be afraid. For the Lord Jehovah is my strength and my song. He is become my salvation. It will be that forever in your life in Jesus' name. Now, Isaiah chapter 40. Isaiah chapter 40. If you've never read this, please open your Bible. Read this. This is wonderful. Everybody say, this is wonderful. And you know that this is for you. This is wonderful. This is for you. Look at this. In Isaiah chapter 40, it says in verse 28, Hast thou not known? Hast thou not heard? That the everlasting God is always there for you. I said it's always there for you. It's the everlasting God in the morning, is there for you, afternoon is there for you, evening is there for you, and night is there for you, and this weekend particularly is there for you in Jesus' name. Look at this, any pain in your body now by the time we finish, you'll know that God is for you, all that pain will go. 
If there's any sickness, by the time we finish, shall you see this? Every sickness will vanish in Jesus' name. If there's any guilt, any oppression or sin in your life, I did this, I'm feeling guilty, I did that, I'm feeling guilty. By the time we finish and we pray, we look unto God, our Savior, all that guilt will vanish away in Jesus' name. If the devil has been knocking you on the head, you're a bad boy, you're a bad girl, I take that word bad out of the mouth of the devil. And I say, this boy is no more bad. Salvation comes to be good in Jesus' name. That's why it says, Has thou not known, has thou not heard that the everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth, fainteth not, neither is weary. There is no searching of his understanding. Verse 29 He giveth, He giveth, He giveth power to the faint. Don't faint, He'll give you power. And, and to them that have no mind, he increases strength. That's the word again. He increases strength. It is just tonight in Jesus' name. Even the youths, that's the youths who don't know God, the youths who are not saved, the youths who think, I can do it by myself. I don't need God. I don't need Christ. I don't need salvation. Those youths shall faint and be weary, and the young men shall utterly fall. But this is you now. I said this is you now. But they that wait upon the Lord shall renew what? The strength. Because they come so strength. They shall renew their strength. And then it says, They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. And they shall walk and they shall not faint. New life has come to you. Number one is looking unto God, my Savior. Number two is living through God, my strength. Before I go to point number three, three words I want to give you now, because I want to summarize all this in our strength. Number one, fortified. Number one, fortified. When was this something is fortified? It is trending. Underneath you are the everlasting arms. You are fortified. And nothing will ever defeat you again in Jesus' name. Let anything come. You stand there in the strength of the Lord. You are fortified in Jesus' name. Number two, faithful. Faithful. It is the strength of the Lord, the support of the Lord, and the, uh, the grace of the Lord that makes us faithful. And then number three, firm. Firm. That, that's a person who's strong. He has strength because of that. He's fortified. He has strength because of that. He's faithful. And he has strength because of that. He is firm. I'm talking about you. I said I'm talking about you. All that weakness in your nature, the Lord will replace it with strength in Jesus' name. Number three now, letting God be my shield. Letting God be my shield. I don't know whether you've seen sometimes um, other soldiers or policemen. There's riots somewhere. And people are shouting, they're screaming. It's like a mob action. And they're throwing this and throwing that. And then the policemen come there. They want to calm everything down. And some of those people are saying violent. But what the police people do is that they have a shield in their hand. And with that shield, whatever they throw, everything is being resisted with that shield. And God says, I am your shield. When Satan throws anything, I will shield you. It will not get to you. When evil powers, evil speed, pass of darkness, when they throw anything, I'll be your shield, it will never come to you. Now look at this, God is our salvation. Look at this, God is our strength. Look at this, God is our shield. Tell me, such a person that has God in that threefold way, Savior, strength, and shield, you will succeed. Letting God be my shield. I'm coming back to this uh, Second Samuel chapter 22. Second Samuel chapter 22, and I'm reading from verse 3. Second Samuel chapter 22, verse 3. And David, Second Samuel, Second Samuel. I was uh, almost going to stop at First Samuel. You'll get to the next level in Jesus' name. You know, they only, they only read for somebody, they never get to the next level, you'll get to the next level. How many are getting to the next level? You are there in Jesus' name. Look at Second Samuel chapter 22 and what verse am I looking for? 
verse 3 the God of my rock in him will I trust he is my shield he is my shield that means whatever comes against your life I praise God for you you are protected in Jesus name he is my shield and the horn of my salvation my high tower and my refuge my savior thou savest me from violence have you seen again that's the word salvation there there's this connection between salvation and strength connection between salvation and shield when god becomes your savior then he also becomes your strength and becomes your shield we're coming to the psalms now and i'm going to read this i know you know this psalm and i pray that everything in this psalm will be yours in jesus name you know, sometimes uh, there are people that they may know a particular psalm, but everything in there is not theirs, and it may be in their head, it's not in their lives. I'm telling you something tonight. Everything in the psalm I'm going to read now, everything there is yours in Jesus' name. I said everything is yours in Jesus' name. What if your teacher comes to the class? And then the teacher said, you know, the first of all talks about himself. I've been to this school, I've been to that college, I've been to that university. I've been for that professional exam. I've got this, I've got this, I've got this. And then you say, why is the teacher talking like this? We know you're already a capable, a qualified teacher. Why are you talking like this? And then he says, wait a minute, I've got this, I've got this, I've got this. And then he says, why I'm telling you all that is that everything I've told you I have is going to belong to you. I said it's going to belong to you. And then as I look at, you know, this psalm, I say, look at this psalm, and look at this, and look at this, and look at this. You see, Pastor, we know that already. I, I know you know. And then I say, but look at this, and we say, but we know that already. I know you know. What I'm saying is, everything in this psalm belongs to you. From tonight, it will be yours in Jesus' name. Letting God be my shield. Look at Psalm 91. Psalm 91. It says, He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. Where are you? You are there. It is yours in Jesus' name. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress and my God. In Him will I trust. Everything belongs to you. Surely he shall deliver thee from the snare of the fowler and from the noise of pestilence. That is yours in Jesus' name. Look at verse 4. Remember what we're looking for? It's your shield. It's your shield. He shall cover thee with his feathers. Under his wings shall thou trust, and, and his truth shall be thy shield and thy buckler you are shielded you are protected in jesus name thou shalt not be afraid for the terror by night nor for the arrow that flies by day that is yours in jesus name nor for the pestilence that wasted in darkness that walketh in darkness nor for the destruction that wasted at noonday it is yours in jesus name a thousand shall fall at thy side, and ten thousand at thy right hand. But, 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 it shall not come near thee. It is yours in Jesus' name. Only with my eyes, the eyes that looked upon the Lord will not see evil. The eyes that already looked upon the Lord will not see calamity. The eyes that already look upon the Lord will not see failure. That's why it says, Now only with thine eyes shalt thou behold and see the reward of the wicked, because thou hast made the Lord, which is my refuge, even the Most High, thy habitation. You are living with the Lord already. There shall no evil befall thee. Neither shall any plague, any sickness, any infirmity, any plague, any pain, neither shall any plague come near thy dwelling. For he shall give his angels charge over thee 
to keep thee in uh, how many of your ways? All thy ways they shall bear thee up in their hands, lest thou dash thy foot against a stone. Accidents are cancelled in your life. If I'm talking about theories of your hand, I said accidents are cancelled in your life in Jesus' name. It is done in Jesus' name. And then in verse 12, they shall bear thee up in their hands. Let thou shut thy foot against a stone. Thou shalt tread upon the lion and adder, the young lion and the dragon shall thou trample under feet. They are under your feet. Nothing will hold your brain. Nothing will hold your back. Nothing will hold your tummy. All those problems are under your feet in Jesus' name. Because he has set his love upon me. Therefore, will I deliver him? I will set him. I will set him. I will set him. What are you living? What are you set? Where is your goal? Where are you going? You'll not be in the valley. You'll be at the peak on high in Jesus' name. He says, I'll set him on high. I'll set her on high. And then he goes on to say, because he has known my name. He shall call upon me, that's prayer, and I will answer him. He will answer all your prayers. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him. Verse 16. Wonderful. Wonderful. I said wonderful. I said wonderful. You know, that sickness will not kill you. It has no authority. It has no right to disturb your life. We're going to remove that sickness tonight in Jesus' name. Because look at this. The Lord said, I mean, how old are you now? You say, I'm 16, I'm 18, I'm 20. He says, something longer, longer, longer than that is coming your way. He says, with long life will I satisfy him. I will show him. Look at this. Everything is connected with salvation. Salvation is there. Strength is there. The shield is there. It is yours in Jesus' name. Face to face with the God of miracles. Where are you? Why don't you rise up face to face, face to face, face to face for the God of miracles. Open your mouth and talk to the Lord in prayer. You look. You listen, you learn, you lean on him, you live, you love him, and you let God have his way. Let God have his way. Just hand over yourself to the Lord. Lord, here am I. Here am I. I hand over myself completely unto the Lord. He is my salvation. He is my savior. He is my strength. He is my support. He makes me strong. He makes me mighty. He makes me powerful. Tell the Lord, tell the Lord. Tell the Lord, if you have not been saved, why are you not saved? Why are you wasting time? Why don't you say, Lord, I turn away from my sin. I turn away from my evil. I turn away from my deception, my lies. I turn away from my iniquities. I receive you now as my personal savior. I believe, I believe Jesus died for me on the cross of Calvary. I said, whosoever, whosoever, whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. And when that salvation comes, then the Lord says, I'll strengthen you, I'll be your strength, and then I'll be your shield. I'll shield you from sickness, I'll shield you from attack, I'll shield you from affliction, I'll shield you from early death. Long life will satisfy you. Salvation, strength, and shield. 
salvation, strength, and shield. In Jesus' name we pray. Wonderful. I just love your voice. Can you give me that good amen again? <laughs> Praise the Lord. It's bad and I is close. You know, I don't want you to cheat yourself. This salvation is so glorious, it's so wonderful that if anybody does not have it, how can you be strong? And you are going to be strong. It's bad and I is closed. If you, for the first time, you want this salvation, just say, Lord, I abandon all my sins. I want you to be my Savior, to be my Lord. This is a great, great moment in your life. I'm going to pray with you. Just raise up your hand. I will pray with you. Thank you. God bless you. Wonderful. God bless you. Anywhere you are, day salvation, I want it. I want all my sins forgiven. I don't want any guilt again, any condemnation again. Praise the Lord. God bless you. God bless you. Thank you very much. Keep the hands up. Keep the hands up. When I finish, one of our leaders will come and then he will tell you what to do. But because of time now, I just pray for you where you are. Father, in the name of Jesus. I pray for these, your own sons and daughters. I'm asking, Lord, all their sins, forgive them in Jesus' name. And I pray that the guilt of sin, the burden of sin, roll it away from their lives in Jesus' name. I pray now, as they look up to you, trusting you, believing you, forgiveness will come to them. Salvation will come to them. New life will come to them in Jesus' name. I thank you because I know you have done it. In Jesus' name we pray. You know, whenever you say amen, I just let me take that away from me from here. Give me a good amen again. Now, now, praise the Lord. Now, sickness, bye-bye. Affliction, bye-bye. Bad dreams, bye-bye. All this thing that is climbing on your neck, on your back, and troubling your brain, I say bye-bye tonight in Jesus' name. Now, if there is any, locate any sickness that is there, you know, already the Lord is our salvation, is our strength, and is our shield. Any sickness there, just identify it. I don't want to, we don't have the time for me to say number one, number two, number four, number ten, or whatever. Just identify that thing. If you have identified it and you want us to drive that thing away, where you raise up your hand. And then after the prayer, when you hear the final amen, one of our leaders will come. And then he'll ask you, where is it? Because that thing is going. 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 God. Keep your hands up. Keep your hands up. Father, in the name of Jesus, the name above every name, the name above sickness, the name above infirmity, the name above weakness, the name above failure. The name above affliction, I come in that name and I command that sickness come out in Jesus' name. Pain, I command you come out in Jesus' name. Lord, touch every one of your children right now. Heal everyone. Take all those pains away. Take all those sicknesses away. I thank you because it is done. In Jesus' name we pray. It's gone. It's gone. It's gone. He's your savior. He's your strength. He's your shield.